U8L5, England and France Reading. Directions. Read the text below about England and France during the Middle Ages and answer the questions embedded in boxes throughout the text. Note, the text is from your world history textbook. The vocab words that, are, that you need to write definitions to in your study guide under section five are italicized. If you want to listen to me read this, click here. England involving government. In the Middle Ages, 500 to 1500 CE approximately, English kings tried to achieve two goals. First, they wanted to hold and add to their French lands. Second, they wanted to strengthen their own power over the nobles and the church. The English king, Henry II, added to these holdings by marrying Eleanor of Aquitaine from France. The marriage brought Henry a large territory of France called Aquitaine. He added Aquitaine to the lands of in Normandy he had already inherited from William the Conqueror. Because Henry held lands in France, he was a vassal to the French king, but he was also a king in his own right. Juries and Common Law Henry ruled England from 1154 to 1189. He strengthened the royal courts of justice by sending royal judges to every part of England at least once a year. They collected taxes, settled lawsuits, and punished crimes. Henry also introduced the use of a jury in English courts. A jury in medieval England was a group of local people, usually 12 neighbors of the accused, who answered a royal judge's question about the facts of a case. Jury trials became a popular means of settling disputes. Only the king's courts were allowed to conduct them. Over the centuries, case by case, the ruling of England's royal judges formed a unified body of law that became known as common law. Today, the principles of English common law are the basis for law in many English-speaking countries, including the U.S. The Magna Carta. Henry was succeeded first by his son Richard the Lionhearted, hero of the Third Crusade. When Richard died, his younger brother John took the throne. John ruled from 1199 to 1216. He failed as a military leader, earning the nickname John Softsword. John lost Normandy and all of his land in northern France to the French under Philip Augustus. This loss forced a confrontation with his own nobles. Some of John's problems stem from his own personality. He was cruel to his subjects and tried to squeeze money out of them. He alienated the church and threatened to take away town charters, guaranteeing self-government. John raised the taxes to an all-time high to finance his wars. His nobles revolted. On June 15, 1215, they forced John to agree to the most celebrated document in English history, the Magna Carta, Great Charter. This document, drawn up by English nobles and reluctantly approved by King John, guaranteed certain basic protocol rights or political rights. The nobles wanted to safeguard their own feudal rights and limit the king's power. In later years, however, English people of all classes argued that certain clauses in the Magna Carta applied to every citizen. Guaranteed rights included no taxation without representation, a jury trial, and the protection of the law. The Magna Carta guarantees what are now considered basic legal rights both in England and in the U.S. Below are four sections from the Magna Carta. No bailiff, officer of the court, for the future shall upon his own unsupported complaint put anyone to his law without credible witness brought for this purpose. Two, no free men shall be taken or imprisoned or exiled or in any way destroyed, nor will we, the king, go upon him nor send upon him except by law of the land. Three, to no one will we sell, to no one will we refuse or delay right or justices. Four, we will appoint as justices, constables, sheriffs, or bailiffs, only such as known law of the realm and mean to observe it well. Question one, why might the English nobles have insisted on the right listed on number four? The model parliament, another important step towards democratic government, came during the rule of the next English king, Edward I. Edward needed to raise taxes for a war against the French, the Welsh, and the Scots. In 1295, Edward summoned the bourgeoisie, uh, citizens of wealth and property, from every borough and two knights from every country, county to serve as a parliament or a legislative group. In November, 1295, knights, bourgeoisie, bishops, and lords met together at Westminster in London. This is now called the Model Parliament because its new makeup 
commoners or non-nobles and lords served as a model for later kings. Over the next century, from 1300 to 1400, the king called the knights and bourgeoisie whenever a new tax was needed. The parliament, uh, these two groups, gradually formed an assembly called the House of Commons. Nobles and bishops met separately as the House of Lords. Under Edward I, Parliament was in part a royal tool that weakened the great lords. As time went by, Parliament became strong. Like the Magna Carta, it provided a check on royal power. Capetian dynasty rules France. The King of France, like those of England, looked for ways to increase their power. After the breakup of Charlemagne's empire, French counts and dukes ruled their land independently under the feudal system. By the year 1000, France was divided into about 47 feudal territories. In 987, the last member of the Carolingian family, Louis the Sluggard, died. Hugh Capet, um, an undistinguished duke from the middle of France, succeeded him. The Capet family ruled only a small territory, but at its heart stood Paris. Hugh Capet began the Capetian dynasty of French kings that ruled France from 987 to 1328. France becomes, becomes a separate kingdom. Hugh Capet, his son, and his grandsons all were weak rulers, but time and geography favor the Capetians. Their tour territory, though small, sat astride important trade routes in northern France. For 300 years, Capetian kings tightened their grip on the strate strategic area. The power of the king gradually spread outward from Paris. Eventually, the growth of royal power would unite France. Philip II expands his power. One of the most powerful Capetians was Philip II, called Philip Augustus, who ruled from 1180 to 1223. As a child, Philip had watched his father lose land to King Henry II of England. When Philip became king at age 15, he set out to weaken the power of the English kings of France. Philip was crafty, unprincipled, and willing to do whatever was necessary to achieve his goals. Philip had little success against Henry II or Henry's son Richard the Lionhearted. However, when King John, Richard's brother, gained the English throne, it was another matter. Philip earned the name Augustus from the Latin word meaning majestic, probably because he greatly increased the territory of France. He seized Normandy from King John in 1204, and within two years, he gained another territory. By the end of King Philip's reign, he had tripled the lands under his direct control. For the first time, a French king had become more powerful than any of his vassals. Philip II not only wanted more land, he also wanted a stronger central government. He established royal officers called bailiffs. They were set to Paris to every district in the kingdom to preside over the king's courts and to collect the king's taxes. Estates General An estate is an area of land in the country that is ruled by a noble. It typically includes a large manor on the property. An estate can also refer to a person's power that they hold or a position in society. In France, the church leaders were known as the first estate, and the great lords as the second estate. The commoners were landholders or merchants that Philip II invited to participate in the council became known as the third estate. The whole me meeting was called the Estates General. Like the English Parliament in its early years, the Estates General helped to increase royal power against nobility. Unlike Parliament, however, the Estates General never became an independent force that limited the king power. However, centuries later, the Third Estate would play a key role in overthrowing the French monarchy during the French Revolution. Question two, why did Philip II call the Estates General together? All right, so stop. Make sure you fill out the vocab words on section five of your study guide. Once you're done, turn this assignment into Schoology.